may choose to progress to an apprenticeship or further studies at a Cert four diploma or enter into higher education, such as a bachelor degree program. Employers, especially in fields such as engineering, are looking for a bachelor degree graduates that also have the practical skills that a Cert two or Cert three provides. The practical skills provide a solid foundation and understanding to the technical theory students experience at universities. They can visualize how something is actually made. Our vetters trainers must have current industry knowledge and will spend a portion of the year working or undertaking an industry specific short course to maintain their currency in connection to the industry they are teaching. This up to date knowledge filters down through the classroom to the students and provides a contemporary learning experience. So when you present a nationally accredited certificate to an employer, they will know that you have received quality, standardised education, and you are ready to work. This is your passport to future work and further studies. Box Hill has made a huge investment into its infrastructure and learning environments, so students receive the best education and are ready to take the next step in their careers. Box Hill will assist you in achieving the outcomes you want, and the VETA certificates are all linked to employment outcomes, and education pathways. Fox Hill does offer a skill and job center. This service offers a range of services, including career advice, information on potential jobs, further training. There's a skills and job center in the city of campus, Fox Hill and Lilydale. You'll need to go to our website to make an appointment. Okay, so how is TAFE different to school? It's an interesting question, especially for those students who have taken advice from the school career counsellor or vet coordinator and may not be fully aware of what they're getting themselves into. The first thing you must recognise is when you enter TAFE on your first day, you're entering into an adult environment. There are considerations taken into, there are considerations taken into account that you are under 18, but gen generally you will be treated the same as all other students at Box Hill. There'll be no one telling you to come to class. No bells ringing that class has started. So you are going to have to take individual responsibility, turn up to the class, preferably five minutes early, dressed appropriately and have the required materials. At TAFE, it is vocational learning, so you'll be completing hands-on activities and being assessed on a range of practical skills. You cannot afford to miss these classes because it is difficult to replicate these assessment activities in the classroom. So it is very important that you, that, that you take the individual responsibility to attend class and complete all learning exercises and assessments. Whilst this sounds simple, it can be a profound difference. Teachers at schools will sometimes push you through so you pass, and there's sometimes a degree of subjectivity with the results. Whilst that TAFE, the vocational training and the certificates that are provided to successful candidates are based on industry needs and employment standards. Those certificates are nationally recognised and are trusted by industry that you have passed and reached a certain standard. There is little subjectivity with the assessing. With VETUS, there is no grade out of, out of 100, nor are you marked with an A+, plus, B, C, D, E. You're either competent or not yet competent. If you receive a not yet competent, talk to your trainer about the possibility of reassessing, reassessment. I also need to talk to you about an important, important shift at Box Hill in regards to this. A VETUS course has a duration of two years. In the past, Box Hill has been lenient in letting year 11 students progress from year one to year two, even though their attendance has been poor and or they have not submitted assessments throughout the year. In 2023, a decision has been made where students that do not regularly attend class or do not submit assessments or obtain competency against most subjects in 2024 will not be allowed to continue into year two. For those students who are planning on completing a VET course to add to their ATAR, this can have a significant impact. If you're having difficulties throughout the year, need extra help, then speak to your trainer. If you do not feel comfortable, then speak to the teacher or the vet coordinator at your school. It is important that you tell us that you need assistance with your study or unable to attend class or going through a difficult time. 
Boxhill has a range of free services to assist students with their studies. One of these is Student Life. Student Life provides counselling services and the student wellbeing officers can offer a broader range of support, including study assistance. All of these services can be found on the Box Hill website and we will place the link in the chat. Again, if you're having difficulties with your studies, please reach out. We do want all our students to succeed. Another way we support our VETA students is by working closely with our school partners. So you can go to the next slide, Morgan, if you like. With over, with over 3,000 students coming from over 370 schools, there's a constant need to communicate with the schools to let them know how their students are performing. We use a portal where secondary schools can access the students' attendance, mid and end of year results and identify any at-risk students. Student schools sorry, are provided with a unique username and password and it's then the school's responsibility to speak to the student and their parents about the results or at-risk status. Box Hill does not contact parents directly about your mid or end of year reports. The schools can download the reports as a PDF and these can be sent to you as a mid and end of year report. Remember, these are weekly classes, they are practical classes. And if you miss a class, then it is difficult to catch up because the tasks can often not be repeated. So it is important that you do attend. If you cannot attend, let your school know, make an email us and that would be considered an acceptable absence. Remember, reports not graded, you'll either be competent or not competent against subjects. I also need to draw everyone's attention to the learner commitment. And this is a serious matter. When you, your parent and school will be asked to sign a commitment, that certain unacceptable behaviours that Box Hill has identified needs to stop. The learner commitment highlights acceptable behaviours that we want to see. It is a serious undertaking and you really must sure that you observe that contract because the repercussions will become quite serious if you do not abide by the rules and conditions. I'm now going to go through the courses that you're here to find out about. <laughs> so in slide seven, in the trades we've got the automotive, building construction, electrotechnology, engineering and plumbing, and uh, um, Health and Community, Allied Health, Community Services, Early Childhood Education, and with the Sciences and Animal Care, Animal Care, Equine Studies, and the Lab Skills. If you're not in one of those courses, there will be a presentation tomorrow, so I'm hoping everyone's in the right spot. It's a great time to be undertaking these vocational courses due to skill shortages across a broad range of industries, not only in Australia, but globally. If you're choosing these qualifications to obtain a higher ATAR or to enter these industries as a career, Box Hill has a great reputation and strong connection with industry that, that can assist you with your journey. Now, I just want to spend a little time explaining how these qualifications can integrate with your senior secondary school studies. studies. Firstly, I've worked in the education training sector for well over 20 years. In the last two years, I was employed by an international college so I would not consider myself an expert in the recent changes to VCAL, VPC, VCE and the VCE VM. Plenty of acronyms there. So, but please speak to your school practitioner to seek further expert advice. Nevertheless, I do want to spend some talk, time talking about ATAR pathways and various study options. When you undertake a VCE, you have two options. You can undertake a non-school assessment and achieve your VCE certificate However, you will not receive an ATAR score. If you choose to take a score assessment, a mark is provided, and this will add to your ATAR score. If you undertake a non-scored VCE, you just need to let your school know and they will send that information to Box Hill. You will be doing the same work and the same assessments as all the other students, but you will not be receiving a study score at the end of the year. You will receive a certificate stating that you are competent against each subject that you have successfully completed. If you change your mind during the year from non-score to scored, speak to the school and the Box Hill trainers to see if this is a possibility. In some instances, you will not be able to change during the year as the assessing of scored assessments has already commenced. If you're doing VCE scored assessments, what you're after is an ATAR score. 
and the ATAR in simple terms is a pathway to university. Depending on your ATAR will give you access to courses and is purely a mechanism to move into a higher education. With the VCE VM vocational major, there is no scored assessment, therefore no exam and no ATAR score. This is ideal for students wanting to commence an apprenticeship and enter the workforce. Remember, just because you choose VCE VM does not close the door to universities or higher education. You can use your TAFE qualification as an alternative entry into university. I personally entered university as a mature age student. I think I was about 25 at the time, and these options are still available to you. How an ATAR is calculated is you will undertake anywhere between four to six subjects at school, in which VETUS is one subject. And that can be used to calculate a top, a top four study score or a fifth or sixth subject as your lower score. Your top four will be automatically chosen and calculated for you. And then your fifth or sixth subject, you'll get 10% of that added to your ATAR score. When it comes to our VCE course, the main thing you need to be aware of is some vocational courses can be used in your top four, just like any other VCE subject, but some can only be used in your fifth or sixth subjects. So let's go through those qualifications. Over to you, Morgan. Hi, everybody. So I'm just going to quickly run through um, which of those qualifications that Neil was talking about where you can use that subject as your primary four or where you would need to be um, where you are eligible for an increment. So as you can see on the screen at the moment, um, all of the subjects up here, you may be eligible for an increment towards your ATAR, 10% of the lowest study score of the primary four for all but engineering. So for engineering, you can use that subject as your primary four study or a fifth, sixth study. So students, you will need to undertake scored assessment if you wish to contribute to your ATAR using that. Um, and please make sure you notify your school about that as well. Okay, just moving over to health and community. So for health and community, both allied health and community services, it can be used as a primary four study or a fifth, sixth study. Uh, early childhood, may you may only be eligible for an increment towards your ATAR. Science and animal care. So equine studies and laboratory skills it can be used as a primary four, but however, animal care can only be used as an increment towards your ATAR. Okay. okay. Back to you now. So when, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Whether you're completing a study score or not, you must complete at least 180 hours per year and pass all of your units. You will then be eligible to receive the VCE Vocational Major Certificate as well. That is why it's important you attend class and successfully pass all your subjects. Please check the Box Hill YouTube channel where you can find out more about individual courses. We'll also include a link to our VETUS guide that will explain the course structure, which courses are partial completions and full certificates. The guides will explain if there is mandatory work placement requirements and any other additional information, such as pathways to further studies and the like. Classes begin on the week starting February the 5th. Most classes are on a Wednesday or Friday morning or afternoon. If you have sent your e-form, enrollment form, you have been accepted into a course. If you haven't sent it, please do so ASAP, or if you are unsure, please check with your school. We will then be sending out confirmation letters that will detail your course, and then another letter will be sent in late January, and there will be more information about dates, times, what to bring, what to wear, and where to go on your first day. These are never sent to parents. Box Hill will always invoice the schools direct. I'm now going to stop presenting. All those links we have discussed now will soon be pasted in the chat room. We are happy to take questions. Please type your questions into the chat room. And thanks Q for attending the seminar. And best of luck. Sorry. For next year. 
Thanks, Neil. So I'm just going to start running through those questions in the chat just so that everybody can hear the answers to them. Um, so first up here, we've got if there is a greater demand for a course than supply, how and when would we find out that our student is in that program? Um, so um, sorry, Neil, I hope you don't mind. I'll just answer this one. No, um, so with that one, um, definitely double checking with the secondary school to see what the student has been, um, the ap application has been submitted for. Um, and as Neil mentioned before, if the student has completed their e-form um, and the school has confirmed that for them, then they have been accepted into their course um, and they will be receiving a welcome letter in the um, coming weeks. Uh, are classes conducted year round or are there term breaks same as with school? So there are term breaks same as with uh, secondary school. Now we do run on the Victorian um, school holiday calendar. So if you are attending a Catholic or independent school where your holidays may differ from those dates, I would recommend double checking with your VET coordinator um, or your careers advisor um, to confirm the dates that you'll need to be in attendance because that might fall in your school holidays as well. Um, so can students' parents access the portal or is it only the schools? Um, so for our VETUS portal, it is only the schools that can access that as it does have some sensitive student data in there. Um, however, the schools should be able to share with you the reports that they receive from the VET coordinators and any information on at risk or attendance as well. If choosing the VCAVM option, i.e. no ATAR score, will further TAFE studies still be open to the student? So absolutely, um, TAFE does not require an ATAR. So what we do instead is a core skills diagnostic test, which isn't so much of a test, but basically tells us where you fall within um, a percentage of students. So then we will know if you need extra support um, or what we'll be able to kind of help you assess what course is going to be best for you in that sense. But um, definitely open for TAFE if you don't have an ATAR. So, okay, so we've got a Cert 3 in Allied Health Assistance partial completion in the course guide. What does this mean? How many more units are required to complete the full certificate? So partial completion means that the students will only receive a statement of attainment at the end of the course and not a full certificate completion. And this is generally due to um, there is too many hours within that certificate for us to be able to deliver over the two years um, or the content is too heavy for us to be able to deliver over those two years. So students are required if they want to complete the full certificate to come back as a post-secondary student and complete those remaining units. So those will be different for each course that is a partial completion. And I would recommend um, keeping an eye out for the Allied Health course information video that's going to be sent out um, to those students in the coming weeks and that that'll be able to detail more about the additional units. So, so just to confirm, VCVM students have assessments throughout the year, but no exams. Yes, that's correct. So you'll still need to complete your assessments to be able to be deemed competent in your units. However, you won't need to sit any exams. Uh, will the confirmation letters come in the mail or are they digital by email? So they're digital by email. Um, students will receive a copy of that. If you um, don't receive that for any reason, please let your school know um, and we can organise to send you out another one. So where and when do we find out about fees? Also, what equipment are we required to bring? So fees, obviously, um, are different depending on which course you're attending. Um, so I would recommend speaking again to your secondary school about any fees that they may require you to pay. Um, as Neil mentioned earlier, we only invoice secondary schools. You'll never receive an invoice from us directly. Um, so please, any discussions regarding payment, please have with your secondary school. But Morgan, in regards to that, government schools are fully funded, but Catholic and independent schools may ask for additional fees from parents. Yeah. Thanks, Neil. Um, again, so finding out about equipment we're required to bring. So again, that'll come within your welcome letter in the next couple of weeks regarding equipment and then a follow up welcome letter in late January just to remind you of what to bring as well. 
Uh, are there any BYOD device requirements? Do we need a device? So course specific questions such as that um, will be answered in our course information link um, videos that will be sent out to you in the coming week. So please keep an eye on that um, and that will advise you of any if you need to bring a laptop, any special um, drawing equipment, etc. OK. So my school has advised that for building and construction, there is no classes available for school students on a Wednesday afternoon due to a lack of staff. Is this still the case? So we are running um, Venice building and construction classes on a Wednesday afternoon. So I'm sorry, I'm not quite sure where that information has come from. However, we do have limited class availabilities. Um, and as such, unfortunately, not all students get to have their chosen time slot, which is generally the, the Wednesday p.m. So in regards to that question, that is becoming a bit of an issue with we just um, there's a there are skill shortages in trade trainers and assessments to work in vet, um, not just in TAFE but right across the board in and in industry as well. Um, so unfortunately, it is becoming a bit of an issue. Um, so can you transfer from the Box Hill to City Campus for Allied Health? Um, so any change requests regarding um, course change, time change date change, anything like that needs to be submitted through your secondary school. Uh, OK, so for the partial completion course, where's the best place for me to find out what the additional requirements are? So again, I would just be on the lookout for your course information video that's going to come through within the next couple of weeks and that'll um, detail that information for you. Um, the other thing you can also do is jump on our website um, and have a quick look at the course available on there um, just to see all of the units you would be required to complete and you can compare that against the units within our VETUS guide that I'm going to link down here after this. Are there any course books to be purchased? So again, it'll depend on what course you're completing. Um, a full list of required materials will be sent out in your welcome letters. Again, um, I don't believe there's really any books or anything to purchase. It's generally more around personal protective equipment um, and things that you as the student would get to keep afterwards once you've completed the course. Um, so again, just keep an eye out for that one. Uh, how will we know where to go on our first day of campus? Again, it's all going to be included in your welcome letters that are going to be coming in the next couple of weeks and late January. So if secondary school students complete a VET course at TAFE, are they still eligible for further TAFE studies post school that are government funded? Uh, yes, I believe you are. However, I would recommend double checking that um, once you've completed your VET course at TAFE within your secondary studies, um, you will need to look at what course you want to complete after that to figure out whether it is government funded or not. Um, we do have some, a lot of courses that are on the free TAFE list where you'll pay a very small amenities charge. Um, others might be a little bit more expensive. However, they may um, offer VET fee help loans. So sorry, I just realised I missed a question in here. Is there support for students with a disability? There absolutely is. Um, so what happens is we'll get in contact with your secondary schools um, and your secondary schools will get in contact with us to discuss some of those required supports. Um, and if you please have a look up in the chat as well, um, there are, I have popped in a link to our website, which has our support services listed on there as well. Um, but we absolutely do provide those supports. Yeah, so there is a disability liaison service. Um, and if you actually go to that on the website, you can actually book um, book an appointment and start um, requesting um, any needs or special support that you may need. OK, so. OK, so if you currently receive assistance at school, um, I would definitely recommend speaking with your VET coordinator about the assistance that you receive there. Um, the, if you do have a support person, that support person is um, welcome to attend with you to TAFE. Actually, we recommend it. Um, but again, you will need to speak with your secondary school about that one. Uh, OK, so could you please run through the requirements for animal care again and scores? Um, so animal care, I believe, sorry, just from the top of my head, doesn't contribute to your ATAR, so you would need to use that um, as a 10% increment 
into your ATAR, you're not going to be able to use that as a um, one of your primary four. However, again, please keep an eye out for the course specific information session that's coming through um, that will detail that will go into it in more detail. So how will we know where to go on our first day of campus? So I did answer that one just a little bit earlier. Um, keep an eye out for your welcome letter. Um, equipment, again, it's going to be coming out within your welcome letter in the next couple of weeks, um, and you will be given a full list of all the required PPE that you need. Um, so that one was for the automotive. Uh, what happens if the student is getting extra help at school? Um, Again, those are things that are going to need to be discussed between yourself and your trainer next year and the secondary school. So um, your school provides us with information generally on your um, individual support plans, et cetera. So we will be able to pass them on to our disability liaison service who will work with both yourself and the secondary schools to make sure that you get the, the support that you require. Uh, so for the elective units, is there a limit on how many we can do? OK, so with elective units, um, given these are set courses, you're not able to choose elective units. So um, elective units are chosen based on the Victorian Curriculum and Assessment Authority's program booklets. Um, so unfortunately, it is a set unit structure and you're unable to deviate from that. And all those units add up to the 180 hours, so they've been specifically selected for the VETAS program across Victoria. And the people that are, the other question is the help for learning disability. Again, speak to the schools. The schools can communicate to us about your needs. And as I mentioned before, we on that website that Morgan will post at the end, we do have a disability liaison service. And I would recommend getting in touch with them, explaining what your needs are so that we are prepared for this at the start of the year. Um, what are the options then? Then if no Wednesday class is available for school students, what is Box Hill doing to rectify this issue and where does it leave students? So um, we do have other options available such as a Wednesday morning programs. We also run evening programs such as a Tuesday and a Thursday p.m. So roughly about five five o'clock to, to eight o'clock um, in the evening. And we also run sessions on other days as well. So we do try to put on as many courses or as many class times as we can to, um, to be more accommodating for the schools and the students. Students. However, unfortunately, we have limited resources and we have limited equipment, um, limited building space as well, which means that unfortunately we can't run multiple classes generally in at the same time slot. So if you attend, are you able to do two VET courses over the three years? So yes, you definitely can. Um, as long as it's approved by your secondary school, what you could do is you could do a two year program over say year 10 or 11 or year 11 and 12. And then on that extra year, you could do a one year program to kind of fill in that gap. So at the moment, the only one year program that we have is outdoor recreation. Um, but yes, that's definitely possible. Uh, is it LGBTQ plus safe? Yes, we definitely are. Um, please, if you have any issues relating to anything like that, um, we are a no tolerance institute for any kind of bullying, um, anything like that, please speak with your trainer and your secondary school um, and we will do everything we can to address it um, in a timely manner. So please feel free to um, express yourselves and if you do have any issues at all, please speak with your trainer. Yeah, and um, also student life as well. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, so our school retains students laptops over the holidays, therefore no access to a school email account. OK, can we register? Uh, yes, you can. So again, just let your secondary school know that you would like your email address to be updated um, and they will let us know to be able to update that within the system. Um, the other thing you can do if is if you would like your email address updated, is to please contact the VETUS team. Um, you can send us through an email and we will quickly update that in the system as well. Um, so I will pop the um, VETUS email in the chat shortly. You missed one about the automotive work placement from, from Anna. Oh, thank you. Uh, if you attend, do we need to find work placement experience for automotive? Um, again, I'm not too sure exactly on the requirement for work placement for automotive. You will need to wait until your course specific um, you information video yeah, is not released. A so it's not a mandatory requirement. So you don't yeah, have to do it. 
Thanks. That's all right. So, um, all right. So, do students have access to study in the library and will these? Yeah. So, on their first day um, at Box Hill, they will go on a campus tour with their trainer. They will look at all of the facilities we have to offer, such as the library. We have some student lounges as well um, for them to hang out in, our cafes, outdoor areas that you can sit in, um, all of that. You'll be taken on that on your orientation on your first day. So how and when do we give our time preferences? So applications were submitted by secondary schools over the last three, about three months, three to four months, um, in which they gave time preferences on your behalf. So um, please speak to your secondary school if you're not happy with your time slot um, and, and they may be able to contact us to, to change it um, or they may advise you that that is what fits best with your school timetable as well. Okay. Um, where is the venue for horse riding aspect of equine studies located? OK, so that's actually changing for this year. Um, it is going to be a different venue for next year than it was this year. I don't know what that venue is, unfortunately, um, but some more detail will be provided about that on your first day next year. I, th I think it's in Cranburn. I believe it's in Cranburn. OK, thanks. Yeah, I think they're still finalising the details on that one, um, but we will give you plenty of information and obviously we provide um, buses, et cetera, for those excursions. You also missed one from Madeline. Sorry, um, when do we give our time preferences? Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. So you're not able to give time preferences, unfortunately, as schools have already submitted and applications have already been approved for the secondary schools. Um, they will generally put in the time that suits you best for your school timetable and your personal preference. Um, so if there's any issues, please speak with your school regarding that one. So if you're unable to attend your regular class for an approved reason, such as a Wednesday afternoon, could you attend a once off to another class to ensure you don't miss course content? Uh, unfortunately not. So a lot of our classes, despite doing um, being in the same course, will do their delivery, delivery slightly differently. And again, this is to ensure that our facilities are being used in the most efficient way possible. So, um, you know, if you're doing you, uh, you both might be in an animal care course um, with your friend in another class and you're in another class one week you might be doing some practical work while your friend does theory work and and vice versa so unfortunately that's not really an option um, but your trainers will generally give you um, some assistance to complete some of that work at home if it's necessary So for animal studies, is there support available for finding a work placement? Um, again, I'm not too sure on that one. Course specific questions will be answered through those videos coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, and you'll be able to discuss that with your trainer as well early next year. Uh, so the students, does the student organise the placement for allied health or does the TAFE school organise? Uh, so usually it is the student that organises with assistance from their school. Um, we will provide assistance where we can. However, I would again recommend waiting until that course information video comes out. Um, they'll provide you with a little bit more information on that one and then um, speak with your secondary school about it early next year and get the ball rolling. Is carpentry a course with an option of scored assessment? Uh, no, unfortunately, I don't think it is. Um, so with that one there, it is a non-scored, so you can use a 10, sorry, you, there's no scored assessment for that one. So you can only use a 10% of the lower study score of the primary four. OK, I'm doing animal care and was wondering when the course is starting for next year. So all courses will commence on the week of the 5th of February. So again, if your course is on a Monday, you're on the 5th of February. If your course is on the Wednesday, you're on the 7th of February. If your course starts on a Friday, then you are the 9th of February. And again, you'll have your specific date coming out in your welcome letters as well. Uh, so for year 10 with animal studies, is doing a work placement required with the TAFE vet course? Um, Neil, are you able to answer that one? I'm not too sure. So which one was this one? The animal care. I am doing animal care. I was wondering when the course, oh no. Uh, is, is doing work placement required for the animal care course? I don't think it is. I think no, it's just recommended. It's just recommended. It is not mandatory. And in regards to the carpentry course, um, there is no scored assessment. OK, so 
Okay, um, last one here as well. Are hospitals back taking students for their placements after COVID for the allied health course? Again, I'm not sure about that one, unfortunately. Um, so I will ask the course coordinator to ensure she answers that question in her video as well when that gets sent around in a couple of weeks. It's a good, um, so it's you, a good yeah, it's a good it's question. It's a good question, yeah. Um, I, I've got a feeling that they are, and, and the good thing about Box, Box Hill's location has a really strong um, association with um Ep what's oh, the name of the hospital next door Epworth. Um, Epworth yeah yeah so, so we've just yeah, in terms of that we'll be able to assist with the placements I'm pretty sure in regards to allied health yeah fantastic uh, so some sorry just the last one here some year 11s missed out on course placements while year 10s got placements do year 11s not get priority okay unfortunately not we don't work on a priority system with vetus so um, we went through a process this year of expressions of interest and then we went through applications. Um, unfortunately, we're not able to discriminate between year 10s, 11s and 12s um, unless those courses specifically prohibit year 10s from um, entering into the course because they may just be a little bit too mature. Um, unfortunately, it is on a, a different basis than, um, than a priority list. So Bailey okay. Health, which Bailey Hell, which course did you miss out on? Yeah, if you've missed out on a course, I really would recommend speaking with your vet coordinator at your secondary school. Um, usually at the moment, institutes are receiving withdrawals um, and they can sometimes accommodate extra students that get enrolled in December and January. So um, again, I would recommend just following up with your vet coordinator, advising them that you're still interested in, in doing the course, that you're, um, that you're keen to complete it as well. Um, and then hopefully they will be able to um, assist you with finding a place um, because we, you know, we definitely want to give every kid the opportunity to do a vet subject within their year 11 and 12. Um, so we don't want anybody to miss out. Um, was there any other questions at all? Uh, is it true that you need your own horse in order to do equine? No, that's not true. So you do not need a horse. Um, Again, I think it's recommended that you have some level of experience around horses. However, you do not need to own one. No, that's okay. Uh, is there a bricklaying course for next year? Unfortunately not. Box Hill doesn't offer bricklaying as a trade, um, either in Vetus or post-secondary. Thank you, Malcolm. Okay, so for start date, if a student cannot attend to due to an approved reason, can they attend a tour intro to Box Hill beforehand? Uh, yeah, so we are actually running talk and tours um, for all students, both Vetus and post-secondary in January. Um, so please jump onto our website and have a look um, at any talk and tours that might be running. You can register for them at both our Box Hill and Lilydale campuses, um, and that'll give you a good introduction on um, where to be. I would um, also recommend students, if you're a little bit nervous about starting school, afraid of getting lost, you can always visit Box Hill during the day and just walk around and just orientate yourself about the college. Um, there's always people around. There's always someone to ask for directions. Um, your first day is always a little bit difficult in terms of getting lost and finding your feet. So, yeah, feel free to come in during the week and walk around and get to know the college before um, the institution before you start. Excellent. Uh, a couple more questions come in. How big will the classes be? Okay, so class sizes, depending on what course you're undertaking, will be anywhere from about 14 students up to about 25 students at a maximum. Uh, so just to give you an idea, your trade subjects generally tend to look lower, so you'll get anywhere between 14 to 18 students in your class, um, whereas your animal care and your equine studies um, and your community-based programs generally take up to about 25 students. So depending on which course um, will depend on how many students you've got in there. Um, but please note, they'll always be secondary school students. Um, if you are a better student, you're not going to be put into a class with um, post-secondary students. 
Um, after the animal care is finished at the end of the year, do the students get a certificate if competent? Yeah, so at the end of the two years, the students will get their certificate of completion if they have passed all of the required units. Um, if they haven't, they will receive a statement of attainment. If you start year one as a scored VCE, are you doing different assessments than if you choose unscored equine? Oh, Neil, do you know the answer to that one? Yeah, no, the assessments are the same. Just scored assessments are, um, are, rate, are given a grade and they're just presented, presented to the students in a different format. They're pretty, very, very similar. Tough. Um, is there an intro session at the city campus? I'm actually not too sure about that. The only advice I've received recently is that we have one at our Box Hill and our Lillardar campuses, um, but we will double check for the city and we will send that out to students and parents um, along with the Box Hill and Lillardar ones in the coming weeks, just so that they're aware if that is available. Uh, do you have the opportunity to work on your own vehicle in automotive? Unfortunately not. Um, we do have a really great range of vehicles for you to work on though. Um, I think a few years ago we got the first ever Honda CRX or CRV. I'm, I'm not sure, Neil, if you're a car person. I, I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. Um, <laughs> but we do have quite a few brand new cars that have been donated to us from industry to work on. So we have everything. Um, from your 1990s cars all the way through to your cars that are, um, you know, running on computers, etc. So you will get the full range of um, of knowledge with those. I think they want to fix their own car, Morgan, maybe. <laughs> that would be nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but if it's a small thing, talk to the trainer. You never know. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so uh, will you two be there next year? Um, so... Neil will be around Box Hill next year. Unfortunately, you're not really going to see us um, as we work more on the administrative side. You will be, however, be seeing your vet trainers. So, um, and they are lovely and they're very excited to, to meet you at the start of next year. Okay, so um, hi Morgan Neil, can you please explain the percentage 10% and how it goes towards your ATAR and how it works? I'm a little confused about how it works. Yes, um, it can be quite confusing with it. Um, Neil, I might pass that one over to you if that's okay. Yeah, again, I'm probably not the best um, person to ask, Flynn. Um, I would definitely talk to your school practitioner, teacher, vet coordinator or career advisor about the 10%. It does depend on the other subjects you're choosing for your VCE. Um, in terms of, I'm just having a quick look now. So for Animal care cannot be in your top four, so it's, it's going to be your fifth or sixth. So if you get like a 35 out of 100, it's going to add 3.5 to your ATAR score. But please talk to your school about it and get some expert advice. Okay, um, if you're doing a VM course, do you have exams you have to do at the end of the year? No, you do not have exams if you're doing a VCA VM. Um, a couple of questions about cars there. Is there any Audis or Skylines? Unfortunately <laughs> not. <laughs> uh, there we go, another one here. I heard that the Burwood East RSPCA is supporting animal studies courses. Is that true? Unfortunately, I'm not sure. You will need to speak with um, probably the, the RSPCA to confirm that. Um, what kind of practical sessions will be done in the community services course? Um, again, unfortunately, we can't really go into exactly what you're going to compl be completing within your courses as they are all so different. Um, you will be receiving a link to your course specific information session short um, in the coming weeks. So please keep an eye out for that. Uh, do we get our own uniform next year? So depending on what subjects you are completing, you may be provided with a black polo top. Um, however, for all of your trades courses, you will be required to wear some PPE. So, um, you know, long sleeved fluoro kind of clothing um, that we'll advise you of. Um, so it really unfortunately depends on which course you'll be doing, depending on whether you get that black polo shirt so on. So I think for animal care, you get special gloves and a, and a special um, shirt as well to keep the animal fur off you. Obviously still cap boots um, in the trades. So it's going to depend on what type of course you do. Uh, does early childhood education and care second year have an exam for VCE students? I don't believe so. No. No, no, it doesn't. Thank you. 
Um, I'm doing first time. year of animal care. Would I be able to swap if I wanted to change earlier in the year? Look, it's it's probably unlikely. Um, generally, at the start of the year, all of our courses are full, so students aren't really able to kind of um, switch and change up if they're not enjoying it. You can withdraw um, within four weeks of starting the course. However, it's very unlikely that you'd be able to get into a different one as the classes are generally full by that time. I couldn't see it talking to a for the CBD campus on the website. Is there one plan? Again, we're not quite sure about that one just yet, so we will email it out um, once that's been decided upon. Morgan, in regards to that, can the students contact the student relationship department and organise something? Um, we can definitely see if there's appetite for it. We can definitely try and get one off the ground. Absolutely. So uh, maybe leave that with me and I will speak to the SRU team tomorrow and we'll see what we can get up and running for you. Sounds good. Hey, um, will automotive be more hands on work or will there be more writing work? Again, automotive is something where you are going to be required to do a lot of practical work, obviously. Um, however, there will be quite a few theory components as well. Um, so I can't give you a percentage split, but I can tell you there will be a mix of both. So for equine, it says on this website, so does this mean in total you get credits of four units or six VCU units over the two years? So year one, recognition of up to four units at units one to four level, non-scored. Year two, recognition of unit three and four sequence. Um, Neil, sorry, are you able to answer that one? So what's that basically saying on the website? So the course is structured, as Morgan was saying before, from the Victorian Curriculum Assessment Authority. So units one and so the four units will be um, are the four units you do in first year. And in year two, you've got the units three and four sequence. And I would have to go to the website and look myself where you do the additional four or five units. So in, in year one, you, you complete part of the course and in year two, you complete the second part of the course. Some qualifications that might be six units or six subjects, other qualifications that just might be two or three. I just don't know what equine is off the top of my head. Um, I can have a really quick look. All right, while Neil does that, I'm just going to answer the next one. Sorry. So is there a student portal we sign into? Signing into this meeting, we were quite signing with an email. So yeah, you will get access to our student web, which is our student portal um, for all students. You'll receive those details uh, uh, late January next year, just before your first day of class. And then in your first day of class, um, your trainers will assist you to log into that and, and get to know that platform. Okay, um, what is the uniform for animal care? Um, so on the first day, you're more than welcome to come in your school uniform or just a, um, a casual clothing, and then uniform requirements will be discussed as well through your welcome letter, but also on your first day. Um, so on your first day, yeah, again, please feel free to come in um, comfortable casual clothes or your school uniform. Um, and, and then from then onwards, if there is a uniform requirement, you'll need to follow that from then onwards. Uh, will there be an information night for parents? Unfortunately not. Um, so parents are welcome, obviously, to join these information sessions, and then we will provide this as a recording as well. Um, but we don't run one specifically for parents, no. And will there be an interpreter for people that don't understand English? Unfortunately not. So uh, when a secondary school applies for a student, um, they're basically, they're giving us permission and they're advising us that the students can undertake those courses. So um, if the student does require support around their English then they would need to speak to their secondary school about that and the secondary school would need to contact us to discuss those supports. Uh, when would the animal care video come onto YouTube? So again they're going to be uploaded within the coming weeks so please look out in your inboxes as we will send you a link to these. And now I'll just go back to um, that last one, sorry Neil. The animal care one? I'm just uh, looking at equine, now. sorry. Equine. Yeah, no, just um yeah, yeah, bear so with me. It's taking okay. a bit longer than I thought. Um, Rebecca, you'll be able to ask those questions as well. Um 
well, the student will be able to get a confirmation on that as well at the start of the year or through their vet coordinator at their secondary school as well. Um, how many students mostly in the class? So again, it depends on what course you're going to, anywhere between 15 to 25 students per class. So I've just found the equine. Give me one sec. <laughs> Excuse me. One of the issues we've had this year is that there's been changes to course structures across about eight or nine industries. Um, it's been really hard. Then the VCAA, the Victorian Curriculum Assessment Authority, that sets all this up haven't aren't releasing a lot of them until early January, which means we're a little bit shortchanged in a sense, and we're going to be very rushed um, at the start of 2024 as we get this organised. I can see now in equine studies for 2023, and again, I'm pretty sure there's some changes coming in 2024, but I don't have those in front of me. There was four units in year one or four subjects, and in year, and in year two, which is your units three and four, there was another four. Um, but I, I'm pretty confident that those units or subjects you'll be studying in units one and two and second year units three and four are going to change in 2024. And I just don't know what they are. <laughs> Neither does the teacher. <laughs> so it doesn't make it easy. But generally speaking, the learning's roughly the same. All right. So we're just coming up onto our finish time now. Um, so thank you very much, everybody, for attending. Um, like I mentioned, please keep an eye out in your inbox over the um, coming weeks as you will, will receive all of the stuff that we've been talking about today, such as the course information videos, links to our VETUS guide, um, disability liaison service, student life services, etc. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you, and everyone have a good night. Um, and a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year for next year. All right, take care. Bye. Do you want to stay on Morgan for two seconds or? Does that mean it's just? Uh, one moment. We'll just wait for everybody to. Uh, there we go. It's just us now. Excellent. Oh, I thought that actually went quite well. Yeah, yeah.